You're checking out Power99.com. Don't stop. Power 99, Roxy Romeo from the Rise and Grind Morning Show, minus Mother Knows and Mikey Dread, but I do have a special guest in the building, none other than Nick Cannon. Yo, How hopefully I can uh, fill that void. So it's, it's not <laughs> just you. I can come and partake in this energy. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with you because you have so much going on. You're like always moving. Uh, comedian, actor, rapper, media mogul, father. Uh-huh. You wear so many hats. Thank you. Um, did you always n- want to be multifaceted? Uh, not, I never really thought about it. It was like a kid with a bunch of energy. Like I had ADD and just liked to do everything. I mean, just growing up in the church, like singing, dancing, instruments, you know, just being in front of people and really just wanting attention <laughs> more than anything. And I think that's where it all spawned. But when you think about entertainment today everybody's multifaceted i don't know anybody who has survived only doing just one thing like everybody's evolved into doing multiple things so i don't think it's a, a rare thing anymore mm-hmm. and right now the thing that's taking up most of your energy yeah. is wilding out right now because we on this road we we out here selling our shows you know we had a great show last night so we just we just keeping it moving so why did you decide to take wilding out on the road uh, the people demanded it more than anything. Uh, uh, people would always say they wanted to experience what they see on television. They wanted to come to a taping, and we only filmed either on New York at the time or L.A. at the time. And I came up with this idea like, yo, let's give them the full experience. And it started in a college road trip. We we shot uh, Wildin' on the Road for MTV2, and we went to all of these different colleges. And the energy was so insane. I was like, yo, I bet you we, we could fill up arenas with this, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. How do you choose who's going to be on the show with you? And uh, you have, like, permanent people, and then you have guests. So how do you choose that? Yeah, you know, are you, you're saying for the live shows or on the actual television show? Well, for the live shows right now. for Yeah, the, the live, live shows is really the people that have the most demand. I mean, we at the people, you know, online or however we do our surveys, we say, who do you want to see in person? Who would you like to meet? And those are the people that we take out. And then, obviously, whoever's popping in music at that time, we get them to come rock with us and give us a concert as well. And, you know, the entire tour, we've had everybody from... Gotti to Rick Ross to uh, Waka Flocka to Black Boy JB to to Twenty One Savage Kodak Black like mm-hmm. everybody you can ever think of they've they've done a show or two and that's the beauty of this show unlike any other tour you go see like you kind of know what you're gonna get and mm-hmm. it's the same show every city our show is different every single night every, and and it's kind of cool because. You know, the Philly show could be completely different from the Brooklyn show. Mm-hmm. And and it's just based off of the, the energy that the, the rappers or the special guests bring to it. So it's exciting in every city. Are you trying to make this a regular thing? Uh, this is our second year going out. And like I said, we're selling out everywhere we go. So, you know, uh, I, I can't be I don't want to be wilding out at 40. But I mean, <laughs> I think I think the brand is going to go beyond me in that sense. So I think even when, even when I'm not doing it, somebody else is going to be doing but it. But this was your creation. Yeah, I created it. So a have you thought decades about decades ago? <laughs> have you thought about like, damn, when I'm not here, who's it gonna be? Yeah, I mean, we talk about it all the time. I tell people, DC Young Fly can handle it. I can tell you know, and there's and there's all these young cats that are coming up, even under him and behind. Like there's there's a bunch of people who could just take this brand, and that's the beauty of this brand is that it's not driven by just one individual. It's something. It's it's truly a platform in the same way that. Def Comedy Jam was a platform, mm-hmm. and Living Color was a platform. Saturday Night Live is a platform, and uh, I feel like Wild and Out is the same thing. Well, like I said, you wear a lot of hats, and another hat that you wear is a turban. Well, yeah, you do. <laughs> you definitely do wear that. Uh, is student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are in school right now. Yep. Why did you decide to go back to school? Uh, cause I finally understood that education is true wealth. I mean, I've accomplished a lot of things in my life, but uh, it was still some voids there, and it, and it happened in the world of academia to where I was just uh, thirsty for knowledge, you know, and and not even because it's not about the degree or the paper that they give you, but it's really that process, and and putting in the time and efforts to show that you know I take education seriously. And I take uh, gaining knowledge seriously. And your major? I have a double major, actually. Uh, one is criminology and the other is strategic legal and management in the School of Communication. So, so I have, and it's really all about the administration of justice. And, you know, I never wanted to just be one of those celebrities who just had an opinion and speaking on, you know, uh, the s- systemic issues going on. And I wanted to actually really jump in and, and put my efforts where my mouth is. So 
we're doing a lot of work uh, and facilitating in a lot of the incarcerated institutes across the country and teaching in prisons and uh, just really understanding, you know, the system that bogged us down, the, the system of oppression and how we can uh, combat it as a community. So is this just another notch on your very long list of things or is this potentially like the future of Nick Cannon? Like um, maybe when you're done. Yeah, with... Yeah, I think it's definitely the next stage in my life. I mean, okay. uh, academia is something that you can go on and and uh, leave your mark in a big way. And again, like I never wanted to just be writing books or giving interviews uh, just to share my memoir. You know what I mean? I wanted I wanted to come from a place of substance. So hopefully one day I can be a professor or a doctor on, on these topics and uh, be an expert in a place to where people actually really want to hear what I have to say. And moving on to something else you're working on, because you're always working on something. Yeah, yeah. E-40 oh, and yeah. Too Short. Yeah, I'm what, super what, excited What's about going this. on with that? Uh, I had the opportunity. I mean, those are my guys. I've looked up to them since I was a kid. I mean, I, uh, Too Short, my first cassette was Life Is Too Short. And uh, to be able to partner with them to tell the story of the region that they come from, the Bay Area. I mean, everyone knows 40 is from Vallejo and Too Short is from East Oakland. And that 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 whole area is so rich with culture. And, you know, everything from the slang to the music to Silicon Valley, you know what I mean? Like, uh, the and even the, unfortunately, uh, the drug trafficking and things like COINTELPRO that go all the way back to, you know, the Black Panther Party movement. And, and all of these stories have yet to be told properly. And I would love to tell that through a series that really uh, mirrors the, the lifestyle of law enforcement in those areas. I mean, a lot of people think I'm just telling another drug tale is going to be like power. Really, we're going deeper than that. We're going so deep to where we're actually digging into the system and, and telling it from a perspective and through the eyes of the, the infrastructure that has bogged down our communities for quite some time. And I'm assuming there's going to be a soundtrack. So Oh, absolutely. And that's the thing. I want to make this show as authentic as possible. That's why we reached out and I brought in 40 and Too Short because, you know, they they are the Bay Area. And, and obviously the show is called The Yay Area. And and everything from the young kids out there, like SOB to Kehlani, who's someone I discovered uh, is from Oakland. and uh, that, So the, the music that's going to come off, off of this show is going to be insane. Let me tell you why I'm excited about it. Because I'm from Miami, right? Okay, and yeah. being from Miami, I didn't really know much West Coast music. Right. Because it just didn't really didn't get played get that there. much unless it was like Dr. Dre or Snoop right, right. Dogg, right? Facts. I moved to Vegas. I was in Vegas for two and a half years. Okay. Um, and I grew, I gained like an appreciation yeah. for the West Coast while I was there. And That's I was like, up. damn, like I like E-40 and yeah. I like, uh, you know, like all of these different West Coast. I uh, got rappers a whole that, movement. Exactly. Yeah. And I never really knew that existed before moving to Vegas. Yeah. And so I feel like this project yeah. could open. I mean, obviously, everyone from the West Coast already knows about it. Yeah. But mid to like even the East Coast, like I just think. A lot of people are not familiar, yeah, and I think and they're gonna get laced with the game. I mean, Oakland is where the, get, really, exactly. the game come from. You know, that's what Tupac said. He learned the game from Oakland. So, and and I feel like when we say the game, it's really like the swagger, the smarts, the 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 intelligent wit that goes on in in these individuals from there. And to do a television show that kind of mirrors their lifestyle is gonna be exciting. I agree with you. Yeah. Um. So I was reading this interview that you did. Okay. And. I can't remember the exact question, but you were kind of like explaining how you don't really get stressed out about you all the yeah. things that you do because you consider it like the Matrix, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is the difference between like Nick Cannon, the celebrity, and Nick Cannon, the person? Uh, the celebrity is like he he's up for public display. He's uh he's the person that is walks into the room and smiling and happy and w takes time and and is really a representative mm -hmm. uh the person i i'm actually truly a more quiet reserved and introverted person uh but i know how to turn it on when to turn it on and and that's that's really the only difference and it's really that's just an exchange of energy you know the celebrity is is there for your pickings and and you could kind of have all your opinions and say what you want because that's that's the person that's on display. So when people comment or say things like that stuff mm -hmm. doesn't bother me because that's the matrix. That's they're, they're talking about my avatar. They're not talking about my soul. So my soul, I kind of keep 
to myself and the people who really get a chance to to see that and interact with that know that that's something private and special and near and dear to me. Wow, that's very deep. But thank you. <laughs> it really is. Now I'm going to go back into the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question is, uh, you have had so much success in your career, um, and it's just continuing to build. And I, I mean, for the little time that I've been around you right now, but even from opinions that I've heard from people that do know you or have interviewed you or have met you, everybody has nothing but good things to say oh, about that's you. That's dope. Thank you. So what, may, what, what keeps you so grounded? Because I know people that I've interviewed that have way less success than you, and yeah. they swear that they are like the next Jay-Z. That's insecurity more than anything. You know what I mean? Like, to me, and and, and there's... Anytime someone has an attitude, especially in this industry, it's it really just a sign of their own unhappiness. When you truly find happiness and contentment, there's no reason to to have egos or or to like where I could be working in a shipyard, I could be working in a coal mine. Like to be able to wake up each and every day to be creative, that's a blessing. I I can't do nothing but smile, even on a bad day, because. I, I've I've seen and been a part of things that are a lot worse. So I just really look at it like that. I, I'm I'm grateful more than anything. Grateful to wake up each and every day and to interact with other energies and spirits. Like, how can you be upset by that? And like when you and I say like when you look at the people who are usually guarded and upset and angry, I just they they insecure. So I, I think confidence, true confidence in who you are, uh, allows you to exude happiness and just be cool with everybody. Like. And, and at the end of the day, it takes so much more energy to be negative than it does to be, to be yeah. positive. I appreciate you, Nick Cannon. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you very much. No doubt. And good luck on the rest of your tour. Thank you. And just everything. That's what's up. That's love. I appreciate your time. Yeah, and you know what? Honestly, I just want to thank everyone in Philly for coming out last night and selling the show out. It, it was all love, and, you know, we coming back. I was there, and it was amazing. We turned up. <laughs> we was lit. It was wild.